your life. All right, so this chapter 7, this is the new review, 2019. Um, so start off solving proportions. Solve proportions by cross-multiplying. So bam, 3 times 2 is 6. When you cross-multiply here, you've got to make sure to distribute. So that would be 6m plus 24. Right there is where a lot of people screw up. They accidentally just put the 4, but you've got to distribute. So now I solve for m. I subtract 24 from both sides. Boom. And I get 6m equals, what's that, negative 18. I'm sure these guys will let me know if I make a math mistake. So be double-checking me on the calculator as we go so I don't mess this up. And I believe the answer is negative 3. So that would be part E. Number 2, same, same idea, same game. So a little shake and bake, cross-multiply. Bam, I get 8x equals 5x minus 45. Um, Got to be careful here. Uh, I'm going to take away the 5x. I, I like to get rid of the smaller x's. I usually just don't want to wipe out a side and have to put 0. So I'm going to get all my x's to the left. And that will give me 3x's on the left, negative 45 on the right, which that looks like a little division move. And negative 45 divided by a positive 3 is negative 15. So the correct answer there is C. So those are the mechanics. That's basically what we got to do in all these problems. But that's the algebra mechanics once you get it set up properly. All right. Moving right along. Number three and number four. Uh, the polygons in each pair are similar. Okay, that means the sides are in proportion. So I should be able to set up one of those little fraction equals a fraction type of thing. Find the missing side length. So if you want to, you could call that x. And luckily for these shapes, they're positioned or oriented exact same. So that I see this x corresponds with the 10. x is just the little brother. And then I'm looking for another pair of sides that I know both of them. So for instance, I see the 3 and I see the 6. So on this problem, you could set up a proportion, but it might be easier just to kind of look at the scale factor. Like, what am I doing to the 3 to get to a 6? What, what do we multiply by? It's just a double. So if you're doubling the 3, we need to double the x to get to 10. Or if you want to go backwards, we need to divide by 2. So I think the answer to this one's going to be 5, d. Um, but if you don't really like that way, or if this number wasn't so friendly and it wasn't a double, uh, another way I would probably do this is I would set it up like this, and I would say little is to big, so x is to 10, as little side is to big side. And that way could work as well if you want it to be more of an algebra looking problem. And you get 6x equals 30, divide, divide, and I get 5 kind of formally that way. I'll probably just stick with uh, with the proportions on a lot of these unless it's a really easy one. So I know this one I'm going to have to set up some sort of proportion. Um, I'm trying to figure out what x is. So I identify, hey, there's x. x is the little bottom. And since this guy's tilted the same way, those two match. So I'm going to do a little over big. So little bottom over big bottom. And then I got to find a pair of matching sides. And I have some options here. You know, I could use the 15 and the 25. So maybe I'll just do that. Uh, but somebody else may have chose differently. Somebody else may have chose to use the 13.2 over the 22. You could also have done that, and it should come out to be the same. But I'm not going to do it both ways. I'll just do the 15 and the 25. So here we go. 35.15s. Oh, snap. That's 350 plus another... 175, what's that, 5 and a quarter? Somebody better double check me on that. I think it's 525. Hopefully somebody checks me, though. This is going to be 75x plus 75. It look good? No. I Minus 75 from both sides. Boom. Boom. That gives me 75x is that'd be 450 
and divide how many 75s go into 450? Well, I know 4 go into 300, and then another 2, so that would be 6. Ba-bam. And then I might want to plug it in just to see if it makes sense. You know, stick 6 in here and say, hey, 3 times 6 is 18 plus 3, 21. Does that sound about right? And I think that's okay. Because when I look at the numbers, you know, to get from 15 to 25, it's not quite double. And 35 is not quite double. So at least we're in the ballpark. Normally, if you set it up, it's not even close. You're like way off. Good to go. All right. If you got a question, stop me. Just because we're making a video live doesn't mean... I might make fun of you in front of everybody, but. All right, these are important. Order the letters. This is the symbol for similar. Um, so this basically tells me that, that angle Q matches up. You know, angle R goes with K, S goes with J. Um, so that'll tell me what sides pair up with what sides because it's kind of confusing what's going on here. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, well, wait a minute. Let's look at QR goes with QK. So QR matches up with QK. So those are a pair. And then we also know, so maybe I'll just color code these because they're not exactly equal. So I probably shouldn't put the tick marks, although hopefully you know what I meant. But those two sides go together. Uh, RS goes with KJ. So RS goes with KJ. And then we'll do green to green because I got fancy colors so we can do that. So we're looking for this blue one. That, that's what we're after. So let's go left triangle to right triangle. So 6 is to x. Those two blue sides should be in proportion. And then I'll use the greens. 4 is to 36. Um, right now, I might be like, oh, I kind of see a nice little scale factor. This 4 got multiplied by 9. So this x is going to get multiplied by 9. So I kind of know right now the answer is going to be 54. But if I wanted to, I could go through the cross multiplying game and get 4x is, that's a buck 80 plus 36, that's 216. 4 goes into 21 five times with one left over. Bam. So either way, good to go. Uh, number six, you know, if you don't have colors, if you're just using a pencil, this is not like totally correct, but at least you'll understand what's going on. Uh, DE goes with DM. So I'm just going to use black like, like you like to say you don't have a pencil. DE, this line, goes with DM, that line. So even though I'm saying tick marks like they're equal, they're not really equal, but I'm just marking who goes with who. EF matches up with MN, so EF matches up with MN. And the other side doesn't really matter because there's no numbers on the other side. So let's go ahead and call this dude X, and let's get after it. So the top shape over the bottom shape, so X to 3 needs to be in proportion with, and since I did top over bottom shape, I got to do top over bottom shape. And again, this one's pretty friendly because it looks like the scale factor here is 5. It looks like we get multiplied by 5. So I could kind of just cheat and multiply by 5. And I know the answer is about to be 15. But if you don't like that, just cross multiply. 6x is 90. Divide, divide, 15. So same game, keeps getting played over and over. Matchup pieces. Give you a second to get caught up. Cool. All right. Oh, things about to get a little nasty. So number seven, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so it'll all fit on my, my picture. 
All right, so I got some options. You know, this this is a, I kind of see like a little triangle inside of a big triangle. Um, I cannot necessarily use the side splitter theorem right now. I think I, I think I could, but really they don't tell me these two lines are parallel. So I'm going to just kind of use the, the little and big thing. So I'm going to kind of draw this little triangle here. And I'm going to just kind of copy this over here so it's a little easier to see. But I got eight to seven and then I'm gonna do the big dog the big dog is all of this and all of that we're trying to figure out how long that big long raid side is over there so we need this we know the bottom the bottom is 28 and now we can set up a proportion if we want to we could go little bottom big bottom And little side, big side. But I'm feeling like I don't really want to multiply 8 times 28. So I think I could do a scale factor. What's the scale factor here? It's a times by 4. So if I times by 4, it looks like the answer is going to be 32. You could do this. I'm not going to go through that. But if you wanted to multiply that out, you could definitely do it. Uh oh halfway we gotta pick up the pace all right number eight find a missing link uh, same games going on here um i gotta shrink it a tad so i can see all my answer choices in there maybe we can scale factor this one and speed it up a little bit that nah, doesn't look like it so pq goes with ef so pq that's this dude goes with ef so let's set that up top triangle side over bottom triangle side is and now we got to find another matcher so let's look at this side PR so PR that's the same as EG so PR over EG which is 20 full and now we're gonna have to do gonna have to do some cross multiplying so we got 24 X equals oh, 1080 all right 1080 divide divide 24 goes in there four four five brain's gonna turn to mush if I'm not doing this stuff on my in my head Right up here, Miss Caitlin Kornacki. Oh, I just had to say your name on the video so everybody would know who you are. Cameo appearance. Only a few million people watch this on YouTube, so don't worry about it. All right, number nine. Same thing. I'm getting tired of doing these problems. How about you? They're kind of all the same. All right, so let's see. GH. GH goes with BC, so BC, so top triangle goes with bottom triangle, and then the 9 is GF, so that goes with AB, and so 9 over 18, and a couple different ways to do this. You could do the algebra. I see a scale factor. I see a little double times it by two. So, you know, what, what times by two gives me 20? Well, this would be 10. Now, that doesn't mean the answer is 10, but it means x plus 1 has to be 10. So I could solve that and get x equals 9. So I know the answer is 9. Um, but if you, if you didn't want to mess with scale factor, you could do the algebra, a buck 80 is 18x plus 18 minus that 18 from both sides you get a buck 62 and divide divide and you will also get 9 hopefully we're almost done with these kind 
It's getting kind of monotonous. All right. Let's see. LK. LK goes with RQ. So we got a 50 goes with 20. And then LJ, L to J goes with RP. So we got a 30 over an X plus 2. Whoa, 30 over X plus 2. And we got to do some algebra. So 600, 50 X, 100. Subtract the 100 from both sides. And 50 times what gives me 500? Divide, divide. 10. Ding, ding. Next. Oh, my goodness. Hey, skip these. These come up next chapter. That's nice. 11 and 12 come up in chapter 8. Don't worry about it. Warp speed to 13. All right. This is what theorem we're going to use. The side splitter. The good old side splitter. Or if you wanted to, you could divide and conquer. But we'll try to use the side splitter. So the side splitter basically says that if you have a parallel line in there, which these little arrows tell me that these lines are parallel, the pieces, this piece and this piece, should be in proportion with this piece and this piece, which I'm going to call X. Uh, so if you do it just the straight up way, we'll have 12 is to 20, blue is to green, as, and I got to get kind of clever. I don't really know what to call that piece. It goes with the 12. But so what am I going to call that piece? Well, I could call it Y, but then I'm going to have a Y and an X, and I can't have two unknowns. So I think I can use these two numbers right here to get this number. Ethan Dunn says what? Who minus who? Be careful. It's always the big dog, the total, minus the piece. So there we go. So 12 over 20, 72 minus X over X. And now we got to do some work. Now we got to get after it a little bit. So here we go. 12X, bam. Whoo, that's 1440. Minus 20x. Uh, add 20x to both sides. And that is going to be, 3 goes in there, 4. Must be 45. It's the only number that makes sense. Now. Even if I didn't know anything about the side splitter theorem, check this out. This, this is kind of common sense, just test taking skills. If you look at this problem, 12 is smaller than 20. So this piece is going to have to be smaller than this piece, but they both add up to 72. So there's no way this larger piece could be any of these guys and have it add up to 72. It just couldn't even work out. So sometimes you can just look at the answers and see what makes sense without going through the formal math. Do it on the SAT all the time. All right, side splitter over here. This one's pretty straightforward. 10 is to 8 as, I don't know, is to 12. If you didn't know how to cross multiply before, boy, you better know how to do it now. You get a lot of practice. Buck 20, divide, divide, 15. Oh, we're looking great on time, all kinds of time. 
15, 16. Oh, snap. Now we got angle bisectors. What's that? You're good at these? So, so angle bisector breaks it up into two sides. Maybe we call it side A and side B. Well, the, the angle bisector theorem says that, you know, the piece over the full side, so 2 to 3, should equal this piece over the full side. All right. Well, the full side is what we're looking for, so I'm going to call that x. The full side was on the bottom. This piece, I think we can figure out because we have the 6 and we have the 2. Big take away little gives me 4. So now we have a nice little setup. Sure, Savannah Bonder. So 2x equals 12. Divide, divide. You get x equals 6. Audrey Glass says she's good at these. So, All right, number 16, same game. Angle bisector, boom. Piece, side, piece, side, equals. Piece, uh-oh, got to do subtraction. 24, take away 9, 15. Full side, 25. Algebra time. Ethan Budnick, get off your phone. Nine quarters in your pocket. That's how much money? Picture it in your hand, nine quarters. $2.25. No need to touch your calculator. Four fifteens, that's 60. Three fifteens, 45. Every time you touch your calculator, your brain turns to mush. You gotta keep it strong. Minus 45, minus 45. That is a buck 80. Divide, divide. Somebody yelled out three. Don't know who it was. Might have been Wes Garcia. I don't know. Correct answer C. Over here it was A. Did I screw up? Okay. Hey, we're almost done. Woo! All right, let's do this. I have piece over piece. So side splitter theorem going on here. Piece. Realize this is not the only way to set it up. Some people set these up differently. So if you got away and you're getting right answers, keep with it. I have a piece, okay, because this 16 and the 8x minus 4, they're on the same band there. This little guy goes with this guy. So, um, but I don't know what this is, so i got to use subtraction. 24 minus 16 is 8. So I think we're, we're locked and loaded. We're ready to go. Oh, man, that's 160 plus another 64. 224. 64x, subtract 32, add 32 to both sides, that is 256, divide, divide, 64 goes in there four times. Some people like to set it up this over this. And then that over that. And you'll get the same cross product. It's just a little different setup. So it all depends on how you want to do it. Oh, my favorites. Now we're getting into some good channel problems. Get all excited. So we draw the ground. A telephone pole. So we got a telephone pole. 36 meters tall. Cast a shadow 27 meters long. So down here on the ground is the shadow. That's 27 meters. Uh, at the same time, a nearby tree casts a shadow that's little. 
It's only 4.5 meters long. So the question is, how big is the tree? Hold the applause for the artwork. Okay. No, I said hold it. So a couple different ways I could do height over shadow. Height over shadow equals height over shadow. That might be a setup. Some people like to go, you know, height to height and then shadow to shadow. <coughs> but either way, I'm not going to solve both of them, but either way, you're going to get 27x and then you're going to get those two multiplied together. Oh man, 436s, that's 144 plus 18, 144 and 18, 162? What? Oh yeah, I got a zero to it. Doggone it. I'm slipping. 1620. Ends in a two, so it must be 660. That's too big. No, this is only 162, because that's 4.5. I think it's just 6. And how I knew that, because when you said x equals 60, I'm like, wait a minute. The tree can't be bigger and have a smaller shadow. So that's kind of why you want to just double check and ballpark it at the end and make sure that. Kirk, don't make me come back there. I'm going to start going real slow. All right, Irene places the mirror in the ground. Here's the ground. Here's the mirror. And she's 28 feet from the base of a tree. Here's the lovely tree. 28 feet away. And her eyes are 5 feet above the ground, and she's 4 foot from the mirror. So here she is, pigtails and all. She is five feet above the ground. She's four foot from the mirror. So we do have similar triangles there because she's perpendicular, tree's perpendicular. Reflections work like that. Third angle theorem says these guys got to match. So now we can get after it. We're going to go height to distance away equals height to distance away. And we get 4x is 140. So 4 goes in there 3 times. It would be 12 with a 5 left over. 35, does that make sense? I could have shortcutted this problem just by using scale factor because I see here now, after the fact unfortunately, that the distance away from the mirror was seven times greater. So the height should also have been seven times greater. I could have done this without a proportion. Number 20. I'll bring it over here closer so my cord doesn't stretch so far. All right, this one was the most missed on the exit ticket. We struggled on the homework, so be careful on this one. Uh, this is the old fence ladder building problem. So the foot of a ladder is 9 feet from a fence that's 7 feet high. So fence, it's chilling right there, 7 feet high. The foot, which is the bottom of the ladder, is 9 feet from the fence. And then it keeps on going. And it hits a building back here. And the building is 15 feet behind the fence. And we're trying to figure out how high up the building does it reach. So what you don't want to do, don't do this. This is wrong. Do not do 7 over 9 equals x over 15. Um, if it's multiple choice, I will put that answer on there because I know people are going to do it. You'll get all happy when you see your answer, but it's wrong. So be careful. You need to kind of break this up into two separate pieces. So you have this little baby triangle, 
that has a 7 over 9 ratio. But then when you look at the big dog, the big dog has an X for a side length, but the bottom is now these two added together, which is what, 24? So that right there, that, that's where people screw up. So make sure you got that number in there correct. Now we got to get after it. 9X. A buck 40 plus 28 is 168. Divide, divide. 9 goes in 16 once. 7 left over. 78. 9 goes in there. 8 times. 72. 6 over 9. It's 0.6 repeating. Feet, I think. Does that make sense? Does that look like it could work? Yeah, it looks like it could work. See ya.